times and then even though you can make it to munich because of the current conditions the amazing team at type tech has put together this uh, video recording so that you can make the best out of current situation and then for this uh, effort i would like to thank the whole team you know, for making it possible and then yeah let's thank them for what they have gone through and then what uh, they are doing their best to kind of uh, uh, tackle the situation and then yeah let's move forward in terms of the presentation and then what i would be talking about so yeah the topic uh, which i was supposed to talk about was future of typography in augmented reality and then uh, one of the major reasons that uh, this whole topic is quite crucial at this stage of time and then i really wanted to kind of and then how in terms of understanding the whole scenario and then i won't uh, go much more de uh, in in detail in every part but i will uh, uh, take you through a journey of understanding the new medium so starting with the first thing which i mostly kind of uh, when i explain this topic to people i usually refer to this diagram which was given by uh, milgram and then in this if you see uh, there are kind of two extremes which we are, uh, we are operating in uh, right now uh, augmented reality and then virtual rea uh, reality differentiation is quite kind of uh, these extremes so where in uh, augmented reality we deal with uh, the real environment and then we kind of augment and put digital information and overlay them over the real environment versus what happens in a uh, virtual environment is everything is uh, synthetic everything is uh, designed digitally and then all the objects which you see or which are there have been computer generated and then that way is uh, what happens in uh, uh, so the kind of challenges which are there at uh, this point of time in virtual reality versus augmented reality are very distinct if you see uh, the whole challenges which are happening in uh, vr are very uh, few and then i quickly run you through like what are those things so in vr what happens is you have a complete control over whatever you design and then uh, even whatever the experiences which are being designed right now in terms of like 2d displays it's quite similar to that the only kind of major thing which comes into play and in vr is that uh, there is a, dim a dimensionality to it and then you kind of now you're not uh, operating in terms of 2d and like flat screen you are operating in uh, 3d space and that's the added challenge in vr but again in uh, that kind of uh, all the variables which are there in vr are very limited variables and then as a designer as a developer you can control all those variables so the challenges in terms of typography are not that high as compared to what we what kind of challenges we, uh, which we see in terms of augmented reality so moving forward like uh, this in this image you can uh, quite uh, uh, see like it's the whole environment is almost like a semi transparent environment and then uh, augmented reality right now i'm wearing glasses and then if i just like put an overlay uh, digital information in these glasses and then i see my environment that's kind of uh, augmented reality and then wherein uh, you are in the real environment with uh, basic pieces of information which depends on the kind of scenario uh, that uh, it can the information can be basic to a very kind of a higher level where all your computing uh, comes into your glasses and then you can you, know, you can do all the things uh, which you are doing uh, right now on your computer or desktops in your glasses itself so in terms of like basic challenge if i talk about uh, this whole fact so uh, one of the major thing in ar is your ever changing backgrounds so in uh, just imagine you are right now sitting in a room the background is uh, so even though uh, you are reading an article in your glass the background cha changes like if i am reading it uh, right here versus if i walk out and then if i am kind of sitting in a park so in that case like uh, ever changing background is one of the major key aspect like which we have to solve for in terms of typography in terms of how we design for it the factor which kind of plays a very uh, kind of crucial uh, uh, part in this is the background uh, the kind of lighting conditions you have so uh, lighting conditions in the room and this like uh, quite good lit room versus maybe a room with like darker room versus if you are going out 
and then you are seeing information right there. So everything changes and then uh, the kind of variables. So talking about the uh, coming back to the basic thing of like comparing the number of uh, like distinct, uh, distinct variables which are there are higher in augmented reality versus virtual reality. And then uh, in augmented reality, you can't control those. So there are high stakes in terms of how we design for those and then how we kind of even uh, design all the elements. Uh, which are there and then yeah, the elements can be text versus any graphics uh, which we put in those. So moving further like in terms of understanding the whole typographic structure which is there. So if we talk about VR, what happens in VR is we kind of uh, so uh, it's much more stylistic approach which we take in uh, VR because we are not that concerned about uh, readability or all these kind of aspects because it's uh, just imagine you are playing a game in VR which is a very future uh, future based and then it's almost like a sci-fi game so then we uh, kind of tend uh, to go for something very mechanical and then something which looks sci-fi versus if we are uh, playing a game which is much more towards very kind of historical event or something like maybe uh, something which is related to myths and legends. So then we kind of uh, move towards classical serifs. So here the kind of differentiation in terms of typography which is there is more towards where like uh, you uh, do basic stylistic approach and then a bit of like understanding of uh, legibility comes in but again we don't very much focus on like how important uh, text is at, at this stage of time. But again, if we kind of now jump to understanding augmented reality where the stakes are very high and then the moment I say kind of stakes are very high is because the kind of even though if I see kind of what kind of places where uh, this is being used. So just imagine uh, so this visual is from uh, one of the operations which happened in London where kind of these surgeons from across the world kind of contributed uh, to this uh, surgery happening at uh, BMI hospital in London and then kind of people were joined in from uh, Atlanta and then uh, Mumbai to do kind of uh, given much more information where they were kind of uh, virtually present and then the kind of because all the reports and everything were also displayed for the people sitting in Mumbai or people sitting in Atlanta. So the readability aspect, so just imagine you are kind of operating and you are seeing a report of a person who is being operated right now. And then uh, in that case, like if you misread any information, then you might end up kind of giving wrong advice and then which might cost a life. So here uh, in AR, we are much more to, uh, talking towards more, more towards functionality rather than style and look, which is like kind of a thing in VR. So in this way, like uh, the major kind of consideration which we have is that uh, the uh, information has to be very crisp and has to be like conveyed in a very faster manner. And then legibility, legibility and readability being the topmost uh, kind of uh, priority for us at uh, this situation. And then that's how we operate in terms of like uh, that uh, becomes our responsibility to kind of give better experience, better uh, reading experience for people and then kind of providing better typefaces and then how we design for those. And then moving further kind of this, if I take you through these uh, one or two uh, slides and then this is like uh, your Bell Centennial which was designed for phone books. And then kind of if we go towards book early, which, uh, which was designed for Kindle devices to uh, make the reading experience better. So in that same case, again, we have SF compact text for Apple watches. And then why I'm showing you these kind of examples is because of the fact like, okay, these were designed, these type, uh, the typefaces which were designed uh, for uh, application in these kind of scenarios were very medium specific. And then those were designed keeping in mind, like what are the challenges which are there? And then what kind of things that will make uh, it much more easier for our users, for our, our readers to kind of grasp their information in a faster and a much more convenient way. And then that's, and, and this is something which becomes our brief. And then kind of right now that there are not much typefaces which are available, or I would say there are, uh, I can't even count, I can uh, just like, there are few typefaces which we can use as like uh, an alternative uh, till the time we design something specific for AR. So yeah, what uh, what is like uh, the situation uh, which is there right now is just like all those applications we now we need, we are in a dire need of kind of 
typefaces which work uh, uh, for AR and then be, uh, working with all these novel challenges. And then uh, once I say uh, novel challenges, that means I'll, uh, like, I'll show you what are these challenges and how it is totally different from what we had earlier. And then why we, uh, we, uh, we can't like mostly recycle all the older typefaces which are already there to kind of uh, provide the best experience possible. Because that's what uh, is our responsibility as type designers or as type design community that, uh, to grow and then kind of uh, give uh, our uh, readers the best possible way and then kind of give the designers who are designing experiences to kind of uh, have an option in terms of like picking whatever stylistic approach which is there versus the best possible kind of a legible typeface which is there for AR. So right now I'll move on to kind of, uh, so now basically understanding the devices. So it's like there is a long range of devices which are there right now itself like and then uh, if I talk about devices, so they are even glasses. So this is an example where this is not focals, which is just like uh, these regular glasses. And then I would just like uh, display basic information, which is like few notifications. So a message has arrived or something like even just imagine like pushing your Apple iWatch functionality, basic functionality to your glasses. And then which is kind of the next evolution and then most probably Apple is working on it. And then we might see a headset coming in this year or by the end of this year or like uh, uh, by next year based on what are the predictions are there right now versus what is uh, like something like uh, information which is being displayed in hololens which is much more like your uh, hololens or magically as a headset where we are kind of shifting this whole kind of uh, full scale functionality uh, just these glasses and then I would be just sitting like this and then kind of doing all my uh, day to day uh, computing on these glasses itself. So this is the kind of wide range of uh, gamut we are, uh, we are kind of operating in, where it's like basic notifications versus full scale kind of functionality of uh, your uh, computing. And then uh, if we talk about like uh, notification, basic notifications we can uh, make do with like the typefaces which we have right now, versus uh, if you are going towards a world where it's almost like we are shifting the whole kind of computing to these glasses, then the challenges become quite different. And then we'll uh, like in further slides, I'll run you through all those kind of challenges which are there right now and then which we would be facing. Plus moving forward, so there is another thing uh, which uh, kind of differenti uh, differentiates uh, this basic thing, like in terms of what kind of tech is being used to kind of uh, give you these AR experiences. So there are two kind of basic ways where how we can do, uh, do that. And then the first visual is your optical see-through devices, which is like basic optics. And so these lenses and then kind of uh, finding, uh, and, and this is the optical see-through example would be HoloLens, where there is just a screen in front of you, which is like an optical screen. And uh, the uh, digital information is being overlaid over it. Versus there is another thing, which is like where video uh, see-through devices where th what is happening is you kind of just imagine uh, like you, whatever you are seeing right now is being kind of uh, shown you through a video uh, so even uh, instead of these uh, glasses which i'm wearing which is optical based so just imagine uh, just like i cover these glasses and then uh, there is a camera which is recording my surroundings and then uh, there is another screen in front of my eyes which is showing you kind of uh, whatever is being captured by the camera. So that's a video see-through device. So what is the difference in these two is like uh, the medium difference where uh, like in optical see-through, you can't control a lot of factors where it's almost like uh, you can't control the brightness or you can't control uh, uh, whatever is being displayed versus uh, in video read through what can happen is you can kind of normalize the kind of brightness which is there okay, you can kind of normalize a lot of different aspects so again in right now like the industry is much more pushing towards and then if you want to kind of know more about uh, the uh, like these displays, then you can just refer to this QR code and then just scan it and then you land up uh, on an article where I've kind of given a whole a detailed view of like what are the differences between these two. So moving forward, like, uh, so one of the major thing which we should kind of discuss before jumping into the design aspect or anything else is the technical design challenges which we have right now. So first would be the field of view. 
So in this case, like if you just make a square in front of you right now and then uh, just cl uh, close one of your eye and then what you can see right now versus what you can see uh, like when you move your hand closer would be totally different. And this is your field of view. So uh, kind of that frame which uh, you can see through is uh, your field of view, which is a uh, kind of limited in current kind of uh, different headsets and then uh, slowly we are evolving towards like a full range of uh, uh, field of view but again the area is limited and then what uh, kind of uh, difference uh, or the kind of uh, impact it has on typography is just imagine you have a very small area in front of you to sh uh, show the information then the kind of typographic uh, decisions you take are quite different versus if you have the whole kind of uh, screen in front of you. So basically, if you have a smaller screen uh, where the field, field of view is smaller, then some uh, people kind of uh, designers are preferring to kind of go towards compact typefaces where it's it would be much more towards like contents weights. And then that is uh, kind of a like harder dis uh, decision which you have to take. But again, I'll uh, tell you like what are the consequences of using like compact or con uh, condensed typefaces in further slides. Moving forward, another challenge which comes into play is the brightness, which I uh, mentioned earlier. So uh, if you see like in these glasses, so where we are talking and uh, dealing with optical devices, the brightness can't reach to a level that uh, uh, looks very realistic. So uh, the things look quite semi uh, semi transparent at this point of time. And then in terms of like uh, uh, choice of text becomes quite crucial. So if the kind of brightness is not up to like very high brightness then you might kind of try to the weight which you're using so um, uh, in terms of like if you're using regular weight versus bold weight has its kind of uh, uh, consequences of using those and then how you solve for like how you provide that information whatever text you are showing in front of the user how good it is it it, it is dependent on the weight and then we solve for that Moving further, like another uh, major thing which uh, a lot of you might remember from older devices is something like chromatic aberration uh, or like halation. So in chromatic aberration, what happens is you see these kind of multiple fringes of uh, colors behind the text, then uh, the contour of the text are not that visible and then you might uh, like end up confusing between, between different letters and then kind of uh, uh, things get so at a smaller uh, sizes, so these kind of uh, things fill up uh, your all the counters versus your apertures, which makes it harder for people to kind of read or recognize different kind of letters. Plus in halation, it's like uh, you kind of don't suffer from this basic fact, like there are not multiple colors, but what happens is you have these kind of uh, like uh, uh, quite kind of a halo happening around the text, which again kind of affects the, uh, the whole structure and then how you kind of see uh, text and then uh, again it fills up the contours and then kind of uh, again uh, there is another fact which happens is just like uh, you, uh, you have very crisp kind of a rectangle but again because of halation you kind of uh, see like round uh, text, the corners being rounded and then if I compare this to an existing challenge uh, which we have already faced would be something like backlit signages which was kind of solved by uh, rounding the contours and then uh, this is something which we have to kind of solve for in uh, upcoming designs as well and then uh, this is this is quite solvable and then uh, again our design uh, design decisions kind of uh, comes into play in terms of how we kind of uh, solve for this problem and then uh, and we can make it like we can solve the uh, through like maybe rounding uh, the corners of the text or we can add something like maybe uh, adding uh, some like light traps which I'll run you through and then light trap as a term comes from like which I started using because of the whole thing happening with like ink traps because in this case again the similar case of scenario is happening and then I'll uh, uh, discuss this uh, more in detail once we get to that. So moving uh, another thing like uh, brightness becomes a problem because uh, brightness leads to your halation. So if you see this, the bigger visual which you see around there is like if you focus at that word Unreal. So the contours are quite crisp and then it's easier to read versus if you kind of focus on that small inset image where Unreal is written and then the halo around the text kind of fills up uh, the whole um, the basic counters which are there and then it kind of the details get lost which makes it harder for people to read 
and then in this case it might be easier for you to kind of easily read it but just imagine uh, reading a whole paragraph with uh, this kind of halation happening with uh, this kind of kind of halo, halo happening around all the words uh, which you are reading so that is another problem which we have to solve for and then like till the technology kind of uh, gets to that level there are ways to uh, we can solve for the, uh, these kind of scenarios and then a further like or another major problem which is there right now is uh, just imagine we now that uh, we are used to these retina screen which are very high resolution and then kind of now uh, seeing these uh, screens which are like lower resolution but and then uh, again 1080p is fine but, uh, but again uh, if the density of pixel is quite low and then uh, if you see uh, all these examples like these three examples which are there so magically how the text looks in the inset images so again, uh, so how uh, the blurring happens because of the re uh, resolution again affects how we read and then how legible the text is. So resolution is another kind of uh, problem which we have dealt with earlier. And then uh, those kind of similar uh, principles can be applied uh, right now. But again, uh, there are slightly uh, slight more challenges which happen. So. So just imagine like earlier there was a basic challenge where uh, resolution can be like just dealt with and then uh, what now what uh, comes into play is resolution also affects this thing where it's almost like if you're tilting your head and then the, the text uh, because of the resolution uh, the in terms of the grid. So what happens is uh, one pixel if you're seeing it straight versus if you tilt your head and the text goes uh, to a certain angle and then it doesn't have the clear pixel in terms of to occupy that space then what happens is uh, you see uh, these vibrating texts and then kind of sometimes what happens is the overshoot doesn't uh, like the uh, overshoots which we designed for like in uh, uh, certain rounded characters doesn't uh, show up properly and then that way is it's all uh, if you see the line of the text then certain letters might seem jumping for you and then which again is not a very ideal scenario to read all the long running text or even a smaller uh, string of text because it's quite uh, so every time you slightly tilt your head which is and then you kind of face this a uh, vibration problem further if we talk about like in terms of technical thing is another the optics is uh, no, it's evolving it's not up to that like a very high level so there is another thing which happens is uh, the uh, the quality of text which you read across uh, the different areas of the lens is not quite uniform and then if you kind of just imagine reading uh, there is a paragraph which is there and then the uh, this uh, section which is right there in the middle of the lens would be very crisp versus if you move towards the periphery of the lenses or the uh, like the corners of the lenses so where it happens is like uh, there is a slight distortion uh, which comes into play and then uh, the text might uh, become slightly bl uh, blurry and then so this way kind of uh, how uh, as a designer as an experienced designer how you can control this is maybe confining the text to the uh, middle region and then kind of uh, uh, designing not going further uh, covering the whole area in terms of uh, the whatever the visual region is but again that uh, becomes a problem because uh, this is not a screen this is not a flat screen that you can control that factor and then uh, this is where the whole challenge comes in so just imagine right now there is a text in front of me which is uh, where I, it's like a small confined area but I can move closer to it but uh, then what happens is if I move closer to it then this uh, earlier it was confined uh, in my screen it was was just this area and then once I move further the area becomes big and then again the text uh, goes towards a per peripheral uh, view and then kind of on the sides where it's not much more clear so these are the kind of new challenges which are coming in what we have to solve for and then if you see in this video you can just uh, like uh, the peripheral area and then the text is not clear and then it's quite hard to read what's uh, what is going on on the sides or on the corners of uh, whatever the visual text is there right now. Further, like uh, there is something which we love as type designers, which is like uh, black text. That's how we text uh, test everything. And then, and if I kind of I have to tell you this thing where it's right now the reproduction of black is not possible in optical see-through devices. So pure, uh, so basically uh, what I'm saying right now is you can't have pure black text in optical see-through devices, which is your AR devices. And then what uh, kind of, uh, what consequences do, uh, does it have is, so just imagine in this case, all the text is being generated through kind of uh, light. 
and then it's almost like a uh, black text means etching off or that uh, so that text which is black you are uh, every pixel which falls in behind that uh, this area is switched off and then what you see is just transparent text so if you if i'm having so if i don't have any background behind it then i don't even notice that there is any text behind this area versus if i have something like uh, black uh, black text on a lighter background then you you will be able to kind of see through that black text area and then this is quite prominent in a lot of the devices so uh, due to, uh, based on the current guidelines it's not recommended to kind of use darker text it's much more kind of uh, you have to use lighter text on darker backgrounds that's the norm right now and then that's how we are like mostly dealing this situation and then if you want to like understand more in terms of like all these challenges and then and uh, like how what are the details that go into it so this is another kind of link where you can find all that information this is an article which uh, kind of encapsulate all the kind of major challenges which are there uh, uh, based on whatever the points which i have discussed so moving further like uh, right now we had discussed about like what are the major things which are there in terms of technical aspects but in terms of like design if i uh, if you are asking me this question where are we so kind of uh, i'll take you through like uh, right now it's a bigger pu uh, puzzle and then uh, the thing which i have been trying to solve and then i have kind of divided the whole puzzle into three kind of uh, different pieces where its first thing is your typography in ar so understanding what kind of how to set text in ar and then what are the needs of the new me medium which we have right now versus like the design of typefaces how we design for them what uh, so based on all the technical challenges which i have just uh, discussed like uh, previously and then how we kind of uh, design for those kind of different challenges and then how we solve for those kind of specific problems right now so that's the second bit of the uh, the problem and then third bit which is like again uh, one of the harder bit uh, which is there is a platform how we deliver these typefaces how kind of uh, uh, how easy it is or hard it is to kind of uh, uh, go in par with what kind of reading experience which we have on our screens right now like be it your like desktop laptop screens or your mobile phones so that is another challenge and then which i'll uh, like uh, elaborate further once we get there so basically uh, the whole thing is about right now this is like creating a recipe uh, which we have to like we have to first define like what is the thing that we want to eat what is the thing that we uh, want to kind of define in this whole scenario and then kind of uh, like understanding uh, what are the kind of ingredients which we can put in in uh, from our design toolkit and as a type designer per versus the last bit which would be like serving these typefaces so let's move on to the typography in ar which is like understanding the whole medium understanding like how this new typography will work and what are the new variables which kick in so first thing is i'll uh, so this is the classification which i have come up uh, with uh, like so far in terms of like differentiating uh, different kind of scenarios based on what kind of parameters which are there so if you see this like in this scenario uh, if i play the video okay so basically if you see this kind of area so i have divided the whole scenario into these aspects where there are three kind of planes which we uh, which we can have where for, first is your heads up di display plane so that is the part like where the information stays sticky versus kind of your ui plane where all your kind of information comes into play where it's almost like all your screens versus basically whatever the information you are providing to the user maybe that uh, that is the uh, the plane where you see or uh, you keep all the information which is there like you are presenting in terms of like reading articles or anything like that and then versus there is a world plane which is like uh, all your surroundings and then you can uh, right now in augmented reality yeah it is possible to kind of uh, fill up your whole world in terms of with all these kind of information pieces and to kind of make it easier for you to understand i'll just like quickly run you through different kind of uh, text so first is your text which is there in your heart plane heart plane is your he heads up display which is like just imagine uh, this uh, the proximity of uh, the placement of uh, the text in this case uh, would be like something like 0.5 meters in front of you so in virtual space like the uh, this we are talking about the spatial alignment of uh, text which is there versus uh, there is something like uh, where uh, where we 
talk about like just imagine this so here it's almost like whatever you're seeing right now is the information is quite sticky right in front of you so if you do all your uh, head movements the information stays right in your view and stick uh, sticking to very specific location and uh, that's your so if i want to compare this with something uh, like something which we used to have like heads up display in your air uh, no, fighter pilot uh, cockpits so where the information is directly stationary in front of the uh, person who was uh, who's like flying the plane so this comes in uh, from uh, right from there and then if I talk about the normal scenario in terms of AR, uh, this information can be your time, your notification, and all those kind of things. So this information remains in your view all the time. Versus there is something like body text or some, like where it's almost like just imagine reading uh, uh, basically your articles or maybe some information or anything like that. Where UI plane is much more flexible, where the information is not stick. You don't have to kind of... Uh, the information is not sticking a very at a very particular location. So if I just play this, it's just like just imagine you can just place the information uh, based on whatever comfortable distance you want to read uh, this like maybe article or maybe uh, like basic information which is there. So uh, in this case, like uh, the placement is kind of quite flexible in the plane which you have. So maybe uh, just imagine uh, from uh, one meters to 1.5 meter, you can place anything around this area. And then uh, this is what I term as um, body text. And then it's much more easier this way. And then the kind of challenges which we have are quite different. Uh, and then which we, uh, I, I can elaborate in terms of like uh, this, uh, we are much more focusing towards reading aspect, we are much more towards the uh, legibility aspects of text versus like in, uh, if we talk about how then it's like basic information which you can or cannot focus on. So the scenario is quite different in uh, uh, both uh, both cases. Further moving into another kind of text, which is something your like sticky info text, which uh, like maybe uh, if you see the, uh, this video, what happens is, so yeah, just playing it for you. And then, so just imagine uh, you have an object in hat and then kind of uh, the information is quite sticking to the orientation of the object. So maybe I, I have this glass in my hand and then the information which, uh, which, were, which was aligned at this direction and then if I move the glass in different direction, the information kind of sticks to its original position and then kind of moves along with the orientation of whatever the object is there in my hand right now. So again, the consideration and the kind of challenges which come into play are uh, quite different. And versus like, again, uh, if we move on to something like some information which is pinned to our environment, which is like, uh, just imagine uh, right now, if you're walking on a street and then, uh, so basic, uh, just, uh, you can look at this video and then, so if you see the video, the information which is being displayed is like in the real world, it, it's pinned to a very specific marker location. And then you can walk past that information. And then what happens is the perspective changes. And because that information stays at a very specific angle, you're walking. Uh, so uh, right now, if I am at a distance, then if I'm seeing it from a distance, then uh, the, pers uh, the angle, uh, the, there is a perspective distortion which is happening. Versus if I come uh, right in front of it, then I can uh, directly see the information. And then uh, that's quite kind of, uh, so another challenge which is there is kind of perspective distortion coming into play and then kind of uh, new things when you uh, you can walk past that information and then that goes away from your environment. So uh, so in this case, like uh, I have this whole sheet which is coming up where you'll understand like uh, what kind of uh, challenges which are there in this kind of scenario. Versus moving forward, there is another kind of, uh, so in the, in the previous thing, where the marker text was pinned to a specific location. Here in this case, in, uh, what happens is re responsive text, which is there. So maybe if uh, we, uh, you are kind of uh, navigating through, you know, just imagine using Google Maps in AR and then kind of, uh, if you, uh, right now the signage shows you, uh, shows right in front of you. And then if once you, to move closer to it, it kind of moves to a certain kind of direction where it is like specifically pointed, pointing towards your destination. So then again, the text is quite, uh, quite responsive to whatever the element it is sticking to. So in that case, like uh, just uh, the again, uh, perspective distortion comes into play and uh, there are different factors uh, which are there that you have to keep in mind to make that text uh, much more legible and readable. And moving further kind of, uh, this is something which is 
quite uh, familiar with us, uh, where it's like TickerTix. TickerTix uh, is something, uh, the uh, kind of name I've picked it up from, like your uh, news channels or something like that, where, or maybe uh, whatever, like in stock exchanges, you have all these uh, information which kind of, uh, which is constantly moving. So in AR, just imagine uh, you are uh, walking in a, a shopping, shopping complex and then uh, uh, information is being kind of relayed and then you see something like this. So uh, if you see the text on the side, uh, it's moving. And then, so this has two kind of scenarios which uh, come into play, where maybe you are stationary, then uh, kind of j uh, this text, uh, just this text is moving. So how do you make it like uh, much more readable for all your uh, users, the people uh, who are kind of uh, seeing this information? And then second, uh, like that is kind of a known challenge versus another thing which comes into uh, play is when the user is also moving versus the information is moving. So right now, just imagine it's a uh, 2x speed where it's almost like the speed of the text which is moving versus the speed of like the person who's moving right now. So to make it easier for you to understand, like uh, there is this whole classification which I've come up with, with kind of, uh, uh, I've divided into different aspects where like it is there like the dimensional behavior, where kind of in 3D environment, how does it behave? Is it fixed uh, to a particular location or does it like kind of respond to however, like how uh, the information is being uh, shown in your display? versus the state of the text. So is it like uh, uh, the text is moving uh, or is it stationary? So stationary text would be like just the information uh, right in front of you versus uh, moving information where it's almost like uh, um, the information is kind of moving like a ticker in front of you, just like your news headlines come in uh, your uh, uh, most of the news channels and then news displays. So that kind of information. Plus there is another kind of uh, classification level where it's the state, the user state. Uh, so is the user standing still or sitting still or he's, he or she is moving right now. So again, uh, the considerations become quite different based on these kind of scenarios. And then uh, there are these ex examples which I've listed, which will make it much more easier for you to kind of understand uh, what, I, uh, what all these scenarios and then what this cli uh, classification talks about. And moving further, so what like uh, uh, right now, if, uh, if we kind of talk about these guidelines which are there, so if I, uh, if you kind of go through all these uh, different major manufacturers or like major platforms in terms of like HoloLens, Magic Leap, or like any other kind of uh, headset manufacturer, uh, they all have kind of, uh, they are providing with guidelines. But again, just like the size of guideline or the size of document, which is there right in front of your, uh, your screen, is the guidelines are that small. Like those are just like one or two paragraphs, which you know already and then there are not much kind of they are not providing those uh, like things which kind of will really help in terms of like understanding what you are really dealing with or what are the best norms right now so uh, in terms of like moving further uh, like how so for the information is quite limited in terms of like if you are a designer who was who is using typeface to design experiences versus if you are a type designer who is designing typefaces for this kind of scenario. So and then I was at uh, this situation like two years ago when I wanted to kind of uh, design a typeface which was specifically designed for AR headsets. So that's when uh, the whole research started for me. And then uh, that's how I kind of got into the whole space of like uh, typefaces for AR. And then uh, based on my research, I came up with a kind of few things which uh, you'll, um, I think my, you might find it handy in terms of like, okay, uh, now if we talk about like uh, how we design for and how we solve for a different kind of scenarios which are already there. So there are different, uh, like few uh, coming from my research, there are few different aspects which I would share with you in terms of like different parameters, which we kind of uh, have in our design toolkit as a type designer. So first like moving in, uh, let's talk about weight. So uh, the guidelines, there are certain guidelines which are available right now in uh, terms of like, uh, you should not use light or thin weight uh, because the, because of the resolution of dev devices or like the movement which happens if, uh, the, if your user is moving right now, then uh, the text might vibrate and then it would be very hard for your user to uh, you uh, like kind of read this information and uh, your text in light or lightweight or maybe thin weights. 
so that is which is already there but again if we kind of move in further in terms of like uh, uh, the information which is there like some people say let's go and use a very bold text or maybe let's go for black text or something like that but again that uh, is a very kind of a uh, no-go situation because uh, the moment you go towards the blacker side or much more like very bold side and then uh, kind of I uh, specifically mentioned about I explained you how halation works halation is all that like halo around your text and then if that comes into play then just imagine like if you have a very bold text or may maybe black weight you're using so uh, just uh, imagine like all the con uh, counters uh, get closed up all the apertures uh, get closed up and then you have a uh, like a uh, very kind of high level of misrecognition in terms of all these letters so again so uh, what i have kind of been uh, working on towards is like trying to optimizing for weights which are between the region of like regular to bold and then kind of even the bold i keep something which is very kind of tried and tested so that it doesn't it works across devices and these uh, whatever the kind of things uh, which i'm talking about right now are uh, i'm not talking about uh, just like your very uh, high resolution displays i'm also talking about the scalability of all the experiences in terms of like if you're designing a typeface then it should uh, like work in terms of like if you're using it for hololens uh, which is like uh, which comes under like high resolution uh, typefaces versus anything which is like uh, maybe uh, you're using something like cardboard which is a vr uh, headset uh, vr based thing but again if you kind of enable the camera and then you uh, make it you record the feed and then you show text over it then that falls under your uh, video series through devices and then uh, again uh, so i'm talking about right now so even if we are designing then uh, what we are designing for right now is for a wide range of devices because again uh, just imagine uh, once the mass adoption happens then uh, you can't uh, kind of expect everyone to have uh, a very high resolution headset was uh, and this is the kind of scenario which we live in uh, right now as well people have very high resolution uh, iPhones versus people using Android devices which are low resolution so and then in this case we can't uh, do the thing like okay uh, we are designing we are using a whole different type family for like uh, your hololens versus uh, something for your low resolution uh, a different family for your like low resolution devices so again uh, designing for a very kind of designing for cross-platform usage is something which i am kind of taking you through in terms of like all these basic uh, facts which i'm sharing with you from my research so moving further like another aspect so moving beyond a uh, weight we talk about width so again so if you remember we had these kind of challenges in terms of field of view where it's almost like you have just like very small kind of window where you can show text versus like a uh, very uh, the whole kind of screen which you used to have earlier so in this case like a lot of people a lot of designers tend to kind of move towards using uh, compact typefaces which i mentioned earlier and then kind of going towards condensed typefaces and then what happens in this case uh, is again uh, your whenever you use like condensed typefaces though one of the major challenge which happens is uh, like just imagine your kind of uh, since the text is not always something which remains right in front of you in a very kind of 90 degree orientation orientation right in front of you you can walk around the text you can see it in, at an angle so just imagine you have to consider those kind of scenarios as well and then uh, what happens is if you're seeing the text from slightly from an angle so then if you're seeing it from an angle and it is condensed then uh, what ha what is happening is it becomes it looks much more uh, like the weight becomes much more condensed and then if you're seeing it at an angle then uh, there are letters which will kind of overlap over each other if uh, the spacing is not uh, right so and then another factor which you have to kind of consider is again like your halation coming into play and then kind of all the brightness uh, factors which are there so uh, if that is like bright enough and then in condensed typefaces we tend to have uh, like a slightly tighter fitting and then the spacing is quite uh, like uh, tighter in that side so the kind of legibility again becomes a very kind of uh, uh, problematic issue so you kind of you have to kind of find a balance in terms of how compact you have to go and then or you want to uh, kind of drop the whole idea of kind of in including a compact version or a condensed version in your type family which you are, do are designing for AR 
further like in terms of like another thing which is a major uh, controversial point at this point of time that a lot of people say that okay we don't want to use like don't use serif typefaces uh, at all and then if you see most of the experiences which are being designed in terms of ar or vr so there is nothing which is uh, like i would say very few kind of uh, experiences which are there uh, which you can see like uh, will have serif typefaces versus like most of the people are abandoning serif at all like in all the situations and then this is quite not true in terms of like how you should go about it because so if i am considering uh, designing a typeface for reading experience i would rather stick towards designing better serifs for all that kind of uh, situation and then uh, another factor which you can kind of consider is cross uh, cross platform usage where it's almost like uh, you don't go very high contrast but again you keep contrast which is quite handy and then i'll uh, let you know uh, where it uh, comes in handy so it's uh, you have to enhance and then you don't have to abandon serif typefaces or high contrast and uh, and then you can just optimize for like whatever the contrast you want to work with in, the, in this kind of situation further if we talk about uh, different kind of joints again joint uh, comes into play like this whole learning comes uh, from that whole bell centennial uh, design where it's almost like ink traps were designed to kind of uh, trap all the excess ink in this case we have to kind of consider those uh, the extra brightness which happens at the uh, these joints uh, so we kind of optimize and kind of get in contrast in terms of even uh, sans uh, serif typefaces where the uh, the uh, kind of contrast is there in these joints so that like or you can just introduce light traps which kind of helps you in terms of like uh, retaining the exact shape of uh, the kind of text or the kind of letter you have so that's another way to go about it further like in terms of excite is another like uh, this is one of the learnings which was there from sinus typefaces that increase the uh, you know, excite to a higher level and then you would be like sorted for most of the thing but again in this case scenario what happens is uh, considering lower uh, resolution headsets so just imagine like the second h you see so the rounding happens and then you might end up like uh, confusing between h and n because uh, the shapes are not that crisp and clear so again you have to test for x heights and then uh, you don't have to uh, you have to decide your threshold that what is the particular uh, thing that you want to achieve and then beyond that you don't go otherwise you are, are run in a risk of kind of again misrecognizing all these kind of different characters which you have further like uh, again we have been talking about counters uh, a lot and then kind of we want them to kind of be much more open and then uh, seeing the current trend that most of the typefaces are coming out which have close counters this is something which you have to like uh, very uh, considered about in terms of how you are using uh, these kind of uh, counters and then how big your apertures are and then the bigger the better it is and then you have to kind of test those along uh, the whole system where it's almost like you don't go to a very kind of least uh, 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 direction where it's almost like you lose the shape of the character where it's almost like just ending c at a very like low level because again rounding is happening so rounding when rounding happens the shape again shifts to a like another level like it might shift uh, quite inside or like it might shift down just like in the case of h i like x height i had shown you like uh, the height of x like becomes smaller so it, uh, you have to kind of be at a very safer point in this kind of situation for the kind of like if we talk about the serifs then you have to be safe you have to test all, all kind of serifs so in my understanding uh, the serifs uh, in terms of slab serifs are working real well uh, really well in terms of like across devices high resolution versus like your low resolution devices so that is the area i think you should experiment you can experiment quite a lot versus anything which is quite bracketed and then kind of in terms of spacing spacing is the key to kind of uh, making text legible in vr or uh, in ar both uh, and then in this case like right now if i have been uh, i have been testing a lot of these uh, these devices and the worst case uh, which i found out is your oculus go where uh, typography is bad now uh, we can't do anything about it but it could have been solved much more like in a better way like if you could have just increased this spacing in the in this case in scenario and then 
uh, the readability aspects and uh, the other text which is there would have been much more legible. So that's the area again, uh, the spacing has to be much more towards a loser side and whenever we are designing for AR. Plus like another thing which a lot of people I have seen kind of experimenting with is 3D text which again right now I would say it's a very no-go situation because uh, again if you are seeing 3D text then you are losing the you are adding a weight uh, on a different kind of axis as well so you are lo uh, the legibility becomes a very kind of uh, problematic issue where if you see the text on your uh, left then uh, it's 3D and then you might kind of struggle between recognizing shapes uh, like A, E and all these kind of characters so it's like designing we as uh, type designers might have to find a uh, better way to kind of if we are implementing text in 3D then better ways to implement rather than like just adding a uh, dimensionality to it. Uh, moving further like uh, now this is like the some uh, basic design principles which are there so I'll quickly run you through them and then something which uh, came into play was uh, something uh, which I learned from so when I was exploring and then kind of uh, finding the principles I have to apply so uh, one of the advice which I got from Hera Dunga was like okay design a virtual features uh, for augmented reality which in this case like I have been uh, doing with the type family which I have been uh, designing is AR1 uh, and then in this case like a lot of pr uh, principles like uh, I design for certain uh, scenarios where if you see uh, like something uh, which is like the M formula coming kicking in around this area which is like uh, and then uh, uh, something uh, which was made popular by Dwiggins and then in this case like uh, this is a very uh, kind of straight away example of how you kind of design virtual features for augmented reality because again if you see this kind of same uh, character in AR what happens is you won't be able to see that kind of straight uh, uh, instead of uh, this stray a slate slash which is happening and then the cut which is there you'll see a normalized version of this uh, n which is like you'll see a normal curve uh, right there so it's uh, again like uh, using the kind of final uh, your medium and then kind of exploiting uh, the uh, kind of limit uh, limitations it has in terms of uh, making it uh, easier for people to kind of uh, read in, in a better way and then again uh, certain kind of uh, optimizations I have done across uh, all the design which are already visible and then some are coming from uh, like uh, basically if I talk about principles some are ca coming from your sinus typefaces uh, which is like designed for distance viewing versus uh, something which is like uh, uh, reading like this uh, small reference text which is like very small text and then kind of mixing and matching all those kind of principles and then kind of optimizing based on the scenarios which we have because right now in AR we have a wide range uh, starting from closer uh, kind of text versus a very kind of far away text which is like uh, uh, can be like up to 10 meters all those kind of scenarios and then even like moving further I this is the final key aspect which I wanted to raise an uh, issue as a very big issue uh, right now which uh, even though right now we feel that we have come to a very kind of high level that we are experimenting with variable fonts right now if we talk about like uh, fonts in, in AR right now if we the application which is being used to design these exp experiences is unity text unity and then if we kind of compare this kind of whole scenario so just imagine what options which we have right now in terms of like all these applications like Adobe application or any design application which we are using right now the uh, the all the kind of uh, options which we have have evolved like we have open type features we are moving towards variable fonts but again if we talk about like uh, the main scenario which uh, which is there in uh, AR VR uh, uh, design applications is that we are still living in maybe 1990s because we are working with uh, some things like uh, the functionality you can see these are the kind of uh, dashboards which you have in terms of optimizing text so like Adobe Unity text and text mesh pro which is uh, now being very this is the key application which is used uh, which is being used to get the best results in terms of text and then I'll uh, tell you what are the kind of uh, limitations it has versus the last one which was monotype text but this has been deprecated like uh, within like maybe three to four months of its launch in unity store 
So moving further, like if you use the basic text, then right now in uh, Unity, you get bitmap, bitmap text, which is like pixel based rendering, which we can't Im even imagine right now. This is quite uh, 1990s. And then this is the kind of experience which we are designing. And then uh, just imagine using our designing for very, very highly optimized text and then not getting that quality in your final uh, like final application. And that's where we are in terms of like uh, uh, providing all these designing experiences for AR. So another like, uh, so I mentioned a sign distance, uh, so text mesh row, which uses sign distance field, which is something like, okay, uh, which is interpolation based system where you kind of have uh, your basic uh, text. So just imagine you have created a text for 10 pixel and then if you're kind of uh, move closer to it, then the system will try to kind of render the text at a bigger size, but uh, interpolation will happen. But again, this runs into very kind of uh, problems, high level problems where it's almost like, just imagine it works if the experience was, if the uh, person was supposed to uh, see that signage uh, if, uh, right there in front of you, like from 1.5 meters, but uh, your uh, user decides that I want to move closer to it. So in this case scenario, the texture which was generated was generated for like maybe 30 pixel. And then once you uh, go closer to it, then what happens is the text now at a very higher distance, the pixel, uh, the size was 30 pixel. But now if you have moved closer to the text, now it might be something like 200 uh, pixels height uh, for the text. But again, your kind of texture which was generated in a uh, sign distance field was uh, generated for 30 pixels. Now the system will try to kind of uh, generate a uh, uh, fox kind of uh, false uh, text which is uh, right in front of you. But again, it will be not, it, you won't get a crisp text. It would be much more like all the rounding will happen. It will be much more blurred. So in this example, if you see the arrow sign, uh, sign in front of you versus the text uh, which is there, there is a huge difference in terms of what clarity is, uh, is there. So this is another, like, this is the major kind of challenge which you'll find around this area. And then this kind of uh, problem against uh, adaptive distance field works on kind of similar uh, principle, but again, it reduces the kind of uh, processing power which is needed. So it reduces the amount of uh, mapping of uh, like different points which is there. So it is slightly better than SDF, but again, not something which uh, as type designers or experienced designers, uh, something that we need. Further, like I would move to like the point where the major thing which we should push for as type designers, as kind of community of designers designing for this kind of like AR is something which is vector te text rendering. So something which is like on your text data is coming. Uh, so all your designs are coming uh, right from whatever the vector design as a type designers we have delivered. So that thing is being uh, like directly implemented in your experiences. So in that case, what you get is very crisp text and then uh, your text is directly being generated from your Bezier curves rather than being uh, like converted into a bitmap pixel or like images which happens in your Unity text or like in your SDF which is Text Mesh Pro. So we want uh, like the community to push uh, towards this case in uh, this case, which is like vector based rendering, but I'll tell you what, uh, what is a major problem right now. So basically in, uh, in this case, the time duration it takes and the processing power it takes to kind of render text directly from uh, vector data is higher. So again, uh, the developers are kind of, uh, if I tell you the truth, uh, truth, uh, the kind of priority of text which is there in terms of uh, like development is way low and then uh, again uh, the the developers don't want to give enough uh, like processing power to just render text and then uh, that is something which becomes a problem for us to kind of and there is a huge gap even if i'm designing so just imagine I am designing for the best kind of text or and I'm optimizing even a single like pixel as a designer that is not being translated in the design in all these kind of scenarios. And then uh, so uh, one of the question which I'm raising right now is can we request for a better system to implement these type faces? So this, uh, and then if you want to kind of know more about the whole system, how it works, again, this is another link which you can refer, refer to. 
and then quickly moving forward and then uh, like moving towards the end of the uh, presentation there's like basic thing which is like how what are the opt so we uh, right now i'll uh, tell you the truth we don't have a system to kind of uh, deliver the best possible uh, reading experience to people but again i would slightly uh, move forward in terms of like uh, i am expecting that would be there but again uh, there is another thing which we have been discussing a lot these days which is uh, variable fonts right now so just imagine uh, variable fonts uh, the, these are some of the examples which have been uh, like we have been experimenting with and then so these can be done but again the possibility of this happening is not quite uh, like easy at, the, at this point of time but again this can happen and then we should uh, kind of start talking about what are the major kind of scenarios where, where we kind of uh, use the power of variable fonts in like solving problems for dim dimensional text in AR. So another like this is another example if you're wa walking on a street or you are driving so perspective text can be optimized based on variable fonts versus like uh, horizontal and uh, like vertical access uh, uh, functionality which is there in this example you can just optimize and then you can increase the weight you can increase the height of the text and then make it easier for the user to read uh, the whole text plus again we have been kind of focusing a lot on this aspect of like this brightness which is a huge problem in ARD devices so kind of optimizing uh, so kind of giving people variance in terms of like polarity based text where it's almost like the polarity of text changes and then based on uh, whatever the kind of uh, uh, level of light which is there in this room versus if I just walk out uh, on the street and then kind of how the text the color of the text or how the text the weight changes so that is another consideration which we can kind of work towards plus again in this case in a, uh, we can use grades for it and then finally like I'll so there is this thing which I've compiled which is not an exhaustive list but uh, something which I am experimenting with in terms of like how we can use uh, variable fonts and then these so based on different kind of uh, major challenges which are there. So if we talk about uh, horizontal axis distortion versus like vertical axis and then distance ambient right these things are there and then if you see these are different so on top you have different axis which I have been testing with and then which kind of come in uh, can be handy in terms of like if we can just implement these so this can be something which like uh, if we can all uh, try to kind of experiment and then kind of find uh, which uh, all which access can be used in terms of like solving these challenges and then kind of gather all that uh, kind of information and then contribute towards all the information and our learnings from them so we can kind of solve for we can be ready uh, in terms of like whenever the system comes into place then uh, we would be like directly implementing it rather than kind of uh, walking backwards in terms of like system being Im implemented and then trying to find fit in like options of like how variable uh, fonts can kind of solve those kind of challenges so it's a good time to kind of start experimenting and then putting variable fonts into play in terms of AR experiences and then so this is, uh, brings me to kind of another question uh, which is like can we uh, kind of ask uh, the OS developers to can, kind of uh, support uh, variable fonts and then kind of make some of these uh, kind of variations part of the operating system itself so where we as designers don't have to worry about so maybe that ambient light thing so we can provide you with the with two kind of access in terms of polarity and then the system uh, is robust enough to kind of calculate on its own like when to show like a slightly bolder version versus uh, when to show like a, a thinner version so I think this is another conversation which we have to start right now plus like again if you ask me like where are we in this kind of curve so we are fast approaching kind of maturity state in, uh, in terms of like where we are going to use the system where we are going to much more like we would need much more uh, like better typefaces and much more like a very enhanced typography which is now not just like sticking whatever the learnings were there in terms of screens flat screens but now kind of designing and optimizing typefaces and your uh, like interfaces and uh, like basic uh, functionality in terms of uh, 3d space so yeah again uh, before like uh, I close uh, this presentation there is one important thing which I want to kind of request from the whole community is something like can we uh, so since this is slightly right now 
we are at a stage that we are working on a clean slate. So we have, so if we can collect this kind of where, uh, data in, in terms of like whatever the problems which or the mistakes which we have done with like earlier past applications and maybe it's in terms of like print, in terms of screen application and all the uh, whatever the kind of uh, shortcomings which were there, then can we kind of compile those and then try to solve since we are now at a stage that we would be building a system for AR ground up, then we can kind of use those, uh, we can use those learnings and then kind of uh, learn from uh, like those mis mistakes, solve from uh, for them and then kind of make this whole new system which we are working on much more robust and kind of uh, something which uh, r does right in terms of whole application and then there are no shortcomings that uh, we used to have that we'll have in the uh, uh, upcoming system. So yeah, that's it, I think, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.